got a stomach full of paper slips. What number do you have? Uh, up to 54. That's all right. 54 don't win today anyway. Pay off for that, fool. Okay, Mr. Terrence. Dad, I think you're sticking your neck out. What guarantee have you got that you're not next? I know what I'm doing. You'd be much smarter if you'd string along with Terrace instead of the DA. This town ain't big enough for me and Terrace, and I don't want you mixing up in my business. That ain't what I sent you to law school for. But, Dad, I was only trying... I don't want you to argue about it. Now, run on down to that office of yours and dictate some letters to the girl. All right, if you won't listen to me. And I'll see you later. Tonight. All right. Now, that's the size of it, Robbins. If you'll play ball with me, I can pin a rap on Frankie Terrace that will stick. What information do you want from me? I want the exact dope on how the numbers racket is operated. And a guarantee that you'll appear in court to testify after I indict Terrace. And if I do, you put him out of business? For keeps. And I'll play ball. That is the government's deluxe special for the prize suckers. Leavenworth and Points West. I don't understand. It's a prison car, honey, for little boys who are bad. They get a free ride. Mm, that's dreadful. Well, it's not exactly a streamliner, but I guess they don't get many complaints. <laughs> no. Louise, you're going to have a great time at Lake George. Well, I won't enjoy it unless you visit me. I want the girls to meet my brother. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, extra, extra. Terrace, power behind the police of racket. Excuse the district attorney. Hey, give me one of those papers. Hey, kid. Give me. Huh? They got your picture in the paper, boss. Yeah, not a bad likeness. Trophy of two. The district attorney today made a bold statement in which he asserted that Frankie Terrace is behind the policy racket. A powerful system has been built up, he averse, as which Terrace is the head, with hundreds of underlings who operate the rackets. Who's been talking? I don't know. But just for luck, you and I are making a call on Manny Robbins. Hello, Terrace? Just dropped in to say hello. I've been reading your publicity. You uh, wouldn't happen to know where the DA's been getting his information, would you? Why, has anybody been talking? Let me give him the works, boss. Take it easy, Bull. Got anything to say? All I know is what I read in the newspapers. Okay. But don't make any mistakes, Manny. If you're trying to frame me, you may meet with an accident. I wouldn't want that to occur. I got nothing to do with it. Of course not. You're too smart to want to ruin your health. Gotta be going now. Come on, Will. Pardon the intrusion. a job in the line? I beg your pardon. Skip it. You should be here soon. Why don't you sit down over there and wait for me? Thank you, I will. What are you going to do about it, boss? No assault with the new DA bull. I can get out of this in just one way. Yeah? 
I'll chase up town and contact the boys. Tell them to put in their lines for a couple of days until I figure this thing out. You mean we don't make no collections? Not a dime. That's orders. Okay, boss, but it's got me all confused. No collections. Next time I catch you one of those broken down routines, you'll be out of here. Louise. What are you doing here? I got off the train as soon as I read the papers. Took a cab downtown. Maxine, a little privacy, please. Okay. Now, let me get this straight. I put you on the train for Lake George, and the next thing I know, I walk into the club and find you here. Now, what's the big idea? Don't pretend, Frankie. You were in trouble. I couldn't go away. There's nothing to worry about. Just a lot of newspaper noise. Frankie, you're not telling me the truth. Sure I am. It's just an investigation. There's a new DA, and he's making a grandstand play for publicity. He's got nothing on me. Please be honest. I suppose I should have known this all along, only I didn't. You've been operating a numbers racket. He's going to jail, does it? You don't have to worry. I'm washing it up. Do you mean that? On the level. I can afford to now. And you and I are going to get in a boat and go to Europe and stay there till it all blows over. And in the meantime, I'm uh, passing the racket on to somebody who wants it awfully bad. I'll do anything you say, Frankie. That's a swell little sister. Now, we'll be out of here in 48 hours. First, I'm going to check you into the hotel, and I've got a few things to do myself. And after that, we're going to go out and have a swell dinner. Oh, thanks. And after dinner, we're going to drop into the swing club. I've got some business to discuss with a friend of mine down there. Hiya, Manny. How's the old timer? Am I going to make you a bankroll? You here with that phony stock again? Now, just a second, Manny. Now, I'll admit that this stock is phony. And this stock is phony. But this stock... Sure. That's phony, too. How'd you guess? Take a walk. How's that, Manny? Get out. Well, before I go, let's take a couple of bucks for a cup of coffee, will you? Cram. Okay, Manny, I can take a hint. So long, kid. Murder. Can't score. You're doing all right. Hiya, honey. Get out. Train joint, isn't it? Want to wait inside? Hello, Frankie. I wasn't expecting you here again. It's my kid sister I'm showing at the town. Louise, this is Manny Robbins. How do you do? Fine, thanks. Suppose we step into my office for a little refreshment. What do you say? Thank you. Well, um, all right. I wanted to have a little talk with you anyway, Manny. Oh, yeah? That's great. Say, Terrace, you're just the guy I've been wanting to see. Have I got a proposition for you? Suppose you tell us a bull. Okay, anything you say, partner. Well, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is my son. Joe, meet Mr. Terrace. How do you do, Mr. Terrace? Uh, my sister Louise. How do you do? How do you do? I didn't know you had a son, Manny. Sure, and he's just as smart as his old man, too. That's uh, quite a recommendation. Would you care to dance, Miss Terrace? No, oh, I'm sorry. She's a little tired tonight. Not at all, Frankie. I'd love to. It'll give you and Dad a chance to talk things over. Well, we can talk while they're dancing. See you again sometime. Here, hold it till we get back, right? That's, um, quite a fresh kid you got there, Manny. I like him. Just a second, Bo. Is that a chocolate soda you're drinking? Yeah, why? I thought so. They haven't improved upon a chocolate soda in 20 years. Yeah? Never forget the first chocolate soda I ever tasted. I was five years old. What happened? Nothing. I was too young. But that's beside the point. Say, how many of these chocolate sodas do you get away with in a day? Oh, 15 or 20. 15 or 20, eh? Just an amateur. What do you mean, amateur? Now, just a minute, Bull. You're a fellow that's got plenty of intelligence. See it written all over your face. Now, listen. I got something here that's going to interest you. See those snacks? Manny over there wants to give me six bucks a share for all this stock I can get. Yeah? Yeah. Say, what would happen if I give you eight bucks a share? Eight bucks? Yeah. I'd stick your picture on it. 
little too much shopping. <clears throat> Say, you dance beautifully, Louise. Thank you, kind sir. I've got an idea. There'll probably be quite a while in there. Why don't we go someplace where there's a real orchestra? Have you ever been to the Peacock Room? No, but I've heard of it. Would you like to go there? I'll tell my brother. Well. While you and Mr. Robbins are talking, Joe and I are going to the Peacock Room. What for? Why to dance, silly. Forget it. No, you don't. But I'll take good care of her. You haven't finished your talk with Mr. Robbins, have you? No, but... Well, then I see no reason why we can't go. All right. But phone me the minute you get back to your apartment, understand? I'll be home. Of course. Good night, Mr. Robbins. Good night. Mammy, you've been trying to chisel into my policy racket for a long time. I don't like chiselers. You know what I'm going to do? What? I'm giving you the whole blooming racket. You could have it. Who are you trying to kid? On the level, I'm getting out. For good. There's a catch in this someplace. Mm -mm. It's a present from me to you. about him. You're not a baby anymore. You can take care of yourself. Oh, please don't. Oh, come on. Be a good sport. No, stop it, Joe. I mean it. I'm sorry. And now, good night, Joe. You don't mean you want me to go home? Yes. Oh, that's no way to say goodnight to a fella. Oh, please. Now, let me handle this. You invite me in for a little while, and we'll sit down and talk things over. See? No, don't. Beat it. Okay. Come in, Louise. I don't like that kind of talk, Louise. Oh, forget about it, Frankie. You'd better get some sleep. I'll talk to you about it in the morning. Good night. Good night. About? What's the idea of getting fresh with you? I didn't do anything, and what's more, I don't want to argue with you. I suppose I ought to slap you around, just to teach you a lesson. I'm not a bit scared of you, mister. Oh, tough guy, huh?
You guys leave me alone. Get out of here. Get out. He didn't do nothing. And he killed him. Joe didn't do nothing. Joe was gonna be a big lawyer someday. And now he's dead. I'm gonna square this for you, Joe. Me. I'm going to square this. Nobody else. has gone off his nut about all of this. Look at him. Need a jury. We don't need a jury. We don't need a jury. I gotta fix him myself. He fixed my boy. He fixed my Joe. We don't need a jury. Gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Guilty of murder in the second degree. to a trip to San Francisco. They tell me they're going to have a wonderful World's Fair out there. I'm afraid you won't make it, Red. No? There's about 10 years waiting for you in Frisco for peddling phony oil stock. But well, I'd sure be there if I had the cash. Well, if you're a little short, I could let you in on a guilt edge proposition. All you have to do is get in touch with Nick Roberts down on 4th Street. He's got some grade A snack that you can pick up mighty cheap. No kidding? Yeah. Of course, you'll have a little trouble passing this stock, as our engraver put a mustache on Lincoln. Hiya, Manny. Hiya, Nick. Hi, Red. <laughs> Why Alcatraz? Why are they sticking me on the rock? What's the matter with Atlanta or Leavenworth? They're plenty tough. The judge simply figures you won't be able to do business from the rock. Oh, I get it. And I could have told him I was washing it up. Well, my friend Manny isn't still with me. As some consolation. He's getting out on bond. Getting? When? They're springing him tomorrow morning. Listen, Al. Get a hold of the boys. Tell them not to let my sister out of their sight for a minute, understand? All right, Frankie. I don't want anything to happen to her. Okay.
Hey, Nick. Fred. Yes, Manny? I'll be out of here in an hour. Remember what I told you. Sure, Robbins. We'll remember. I'm all right, dear. How are you? Well, let me look at you. Do you look fine? Frankie, I'm going to do everything I can for you. Maybe the appeal will... Not a chance, honey. It was denied this morning. Oh. Louise, I've been thinking. Remember that trip to Europe we were planning? Yes. Well, why don't you take it now? Oh, no, Frankie, I couldn't. Why, it'll be the best thing in the world for you. You need a rest. You wouldn't be just trying to get me out of town, would you? What would I want to get you out of town for? Well, I... So perhaps with Manny Robbins out of jail, you might be afraid something might happen to me. No, nothing like that could happen. And that wouldn't be why Bull and the rest of them are keeping such a close watch on me, would it? Why, no, they're just around in case you want anything, that's all. I see. Then you will take that trip? I will if you want me to, Frankie. Oh. oh. Now, look, don't start crying till I get out of here, will you, honey, please? I won't cry. That's a good kid. Bye, Frankie. So long, Louise. Before we go any further, I want you to understand that I'm not an ordinary prisoner, but I'm a government prisoner, and I want to be treated as such. What are you doing, getting hostile? Okay, if that's the way you're going to pull out. Anytime, Mr. Wilson, any time at all. Keep your eyes open, Adams. Robbins may actually try to fulfill his threat. The terrorists won't reach the rock alive. I don't see how anything can happen, Chief. These prison cars are no setup. Yes, I know, but this has been an important case for me. I'm putting you on that train because I don't want anything to go wrong. Keep me posted. Yes, sir. I'll let it get you, Miss Louise. Hey, Bull. What do you want? Manny's going around talking big. He says, Frank, you'll never get to the rock. Shut up, you dummy. Hey, where are you going, Miss Louise? Oh, boy. I've been looking for you. Yes, ma'am? This is very important. I must get a message into the prison car. Well, that's absolutely impossible, miss. Couldn't you possibly? No, we have no connection with the prison car. None whatever. the great Frankie Terrace is going to the rock. Yes, sir, going to Alcatraz, just like ordinary folks. 
Ladies and gentlemen. Sit down, tramp. Quiet, lowlife. I now give you the great Frankie Terrace. Better known in our intimate circles as Frankie the Rat Terrace. Oh. <laughs> Gentlemen, my popularity is overwhelming. Thank you. If you don't keep quiet, I'll knock your brains out. You can't knock my brains out. Is that the way you feel about it? Sure. If I had brains, do you think I'd be riding in here with these baboons? Quiet! Quiet! Yeah, it's quiet, fellas, and we're not kidding. I'm with you, partner, 100%. You shut up! All right, all right. You'll be a guard all your life. Take it, please. Move right through to the coast, sir. Right you are. Take it, please. Oh, well, I'm afraid I'll have to buy one. You see, I just decided to get on at the last minute. How far are you going? Yeah, let's see. That will be uh, $107.66, including an upper berth. I'd prefer a lower. Sorry, I haven't a single one left until Kansas City. Oh, but I can't. Oh, the young lady can have mine, Conductor. Thank you, but I... Oh, I don't mind an upper, really. Here you are, Conductor. Just switch them. Well, that means I'll have to give you a refund. You can take care of that later. <laughs> Thank you. You're very kind. That's perfectly all right. If I were you, Muggs, I'd take a peek at the scenery. You won't be seeing it for a long time. Why, right, yeah. You know, the last time I took a trip to the coast, I didn't see a bit of the scenery. Why not? I was riding inside of a boxcar. Tell us, fellow. I say, neighbor, uh, may I... Shut up! Will you give me a... Shut up! I want a glass of water. You'll get bread and water to the coast if you don't stop annoying me. Yeah? What'll that be, white or rye? Move over, Slim. I'm going to take a flopper out. Lay off that pony snoring. Still the big shot, eh, Cass? Big shot? There ain't no big shots where he's going. Yeah. Those tough guys on the rock don't like big shots, from what I hear. Yeah, Terrace. You're living on borrowed time. And somebody might foreclose on you. No kidding. That's right. I heard you're never even gonna reach the rock. A certain party is gonna see to that. I thought you knew. Everybody knows you ain't gonna get away with what you've done. It just ain't in the cards. You're gonna get yours, stool pigeon. Why, you... Hey! 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 Who started that? Uh, it's him that started it. The big shot. That's who started it. Big shot? He isn't even a cap pistol now. We don't want any more trouble with you, Terrace. You get yours, Terrace. Who's got to think I'm be smooth? 
train and wait for orders. We are flying to Kansas City. You'll hear from me there. Lay low. Okay, boss. Sorry, miss, but you'll have to move along. Tell me the government is going to put a swimming pool in on the rock. Yeah? Yeah. Well, why shouldn't they? They're catering to a better class of people. Now take careful over there. Who? Uh, you're a guy after my own heart. Mm -hmm. You've got plenty of nerve. That's what I like about you, Red. Come on, step along, boys. Hiya, neighbors. What are you down in the dumps for? You'll be down in the dumps, too, if you've got 90 years. Ninety years, that ain't much. No? No. And I'll tell you why. Now, there's 365 days in a year. There's 52 Sundays you don't work. You take time off for shaving, five national holidays, eight hours sleep every night, and three months off for good behavior. Yeah, but all the time I'm still in prison. I never thought of it. I don't know why they give me 90 years. I'll never do it all. Well, do all you can. Oh, 
coffee and toast? If you please. Madam, may I point out the advantages of our combination breakfast number two? Thank you, but all I want is coffee and toast. Ah, but consider, madam, for practically the same price, our combination breakfast number two, of which we are very proud, consists not only of coffee and toast, but a large glass of chili orange juice, some strips of bacon, and last but not least, an ample serving of marmalade. Very well, then. Bring me number two, by all means. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. This number two breakfast looks mighty fine. Splendid, sir. But on uh, second thought, I think I'll have the number five, which I see includes ham and eggs. Well, just as you please, sir. You know, I'm not one to talk. In fact, I'd rather have my tongue cut out than spill anything a pal has given me in confidence. Mm -hmm. But, uh, something's really gonna happen on this rattler before we get to Frisco. Back down, my dopey friend. You're dreaming. No, sir. You know what? I'll tell you. Some friends of mine are gonna take care of Frankie Terrace. I say, old fellow, could I trouble you for the menu? Yeah, yeah where's the we chow? I tell you, Muggins, I all get nothing. Well, 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 Better go through and see if the food is ready. I'm hungry myself. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. without you. Oh, don't mention it. It's my daily good deed. Won't you sit down? Thank you. My name's Bill Adams. I'm Louise Terrace. I'm very glad to meet you, Miss Terrace. Morning, Captain. Morning. Still taking the morning exercises, eh? <laughs> All right, boys.
wait a second. I wouldn't eat that if I were you. They may have put something in it. No. Exactly. You're doing 90 years, aren't you? Yeah. Well, you'll get hip to yourself. Maybe trying to bump you off or something. Wait a second. It's not rat poison. It's not aspirin. What is it? It's oatmeal. Here. Glutton, I'll eat my own. Hey, would you mind taking this away? I can't eat it. Oh, a softie, huh? Have some coffee, please. Does it get it, Captain? Okay, let him have it. Let him have it. meet my Aunt Agatha. She's a card. Oh, you mustn't forget to thank her for me. She came to the rescue just like the Marines always do. <laughs> Is everything all right? job a couple of years ago. Here's the layout. Right here, yeah. Junction City, the train pulls up for orders. I'll put you guys on layout. You see, the highway parallels the track for about 75 miles. 75 miles. You're away from everybody after the train pulls out of Junction City. Understand? Two more days to the rock, Frankie. That's all. 
Now, don't worry. You ain't never gonna get there anyway. You lay off me or else I'm not... You ain't doing nothing anymore. Your number's up. Say, you two guys better cut that out of that guard down there. He'll come out here and pull your boat apart. Cut it out. Yeah. Say, when's the break coming off? Soon now. Keep your socks on. <laughs> now get this straight. At the junction dock and Mike hot the locomotive. We'll follow. About 50 miles down is a switchover. That's where we go to work. You're worried about something, aren't you? What makes you think that? Mm, just a hunch. It's about someone in the prison car, isn't that right? Well, don't go yet, Miss Davis. What are you after? Nothing at all. I happen to know that your brother's in that 